<laughs> who are you as a person? <laughs> uh, I'm I'm Brecken Meyer. I'm Matthew Sunrich. Check check one two. This is All Seth right. Green's severed head. <laughs> Actual size. Actual <laughs> size. <laughs> um, so what's happening today? What am I saying? Will we be seeing a feature film to the home court? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really soon. So we're working on it. Yeah. George Lucas is doing it. <laughs> I have to ask, what, what are you guys thinking about J.J. Abrams getting the uh, silver platter of Star Wars? Yeah, I'm excited. I want to see it. Yeah, I mean, I'm very excited to see it. Yeah, I mean, fingers crossed. Again, it's this. You just the unknown. It's the unknown. I feel they chose wisely. To, to quote, you know, the uh, Last Crusade. I think they chose wisely. This is this is so Whoa! Whoa! Uh -oh. Whoa! Uh -oh. Has he given you any new father for jokes using JJ on Star Wars as to what it will be like? The, no, be, only because we, if we do a sketch now, so much information will be out by the time it airs that it would be dated. So you can't really do anything about it until we see it. Because um, again, it takes like nine months to produce an episode. So if we make this joke now, there's going to be a trailer in nine months probably. You know, who knows what it's going to be like? Um, but we're, we're curious. Yeah. It takes nine months to make an episode, but when the episode's done, what happens to like all the little clay figures? You guys had like a clay elephant graveyard, or oh, we keep them. They're all over our office. Over there. Yeah, <laughs> genocide. Melt them. Yeah. No, they're so on my desk. So yeah. there's like a big room, like with every. Like, oh yeah, we have a box. We have boxes of toys, and it'll be like Voltron, Transformers, yeah. Transformers. You know, A through F. You know, oh, like by character, awesome. and then. Um, and I'm not kidding when I say I have like the Wampa on my desk, I have the Emperor on my desk. If it's super beloved, you, we fight, there's fighting for it. Yeah. And then if we need it again, we'll grab it off someone's desk and then it shows up somewhere. The Thunderdome for the robot sucking a washing machine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> to a place, enter. We actually place. have yeah. a eight foot tall humping <laughs> robot in our lobby. Yeah. Um, Does it work? It, it lights up, his eyes light up, and you can lift his arm up so you can go behind him and then it goes around your waist with his hand. So it is a, a magical picture to be had for anyone who comes to visit. Speaking of magic, how do you guys get the guest celebrities that you get? Beg. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I, yeah, initially beg and now it's gotten to a weird place where people actually say like, hey, can I come to the show? Really? Have you seen it? Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you think the exposure on things like Family Guy has helped? Um, yeah, I don't think it's hurt. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It definitely, it definitely <coughs> helps us. Um, it, I think it, we're this, we become a cult phenomenon in a weird way. We're actually beyond, we're actually more popular than cult anymore. Um, but it's, it's, I love people who are like, do you get mad when Family Guy does that? I'm like, you know Seth Green is a regular <laughs> on family, family Guy. Yeah. And they're friends. So they <laughs> called Seth up and like, hey, can we make fun? And he's like, yeah, let's make fun. And like so, so it's all in the family. Like again, Seth MacFarlane was working on our stuff with Brecken when we did it as webisodes back for uh, Sony Screen Blast um, back in 2000, and it was after Family Guy canceled the first time. <laughs> what is the line between cult and pop? Like when were you like across that? I think line? I think you get to that place where it's like there's a certain type of people where people watch your show, um, and it's just that fan base. And then when it goes out to like, if my parents start to hear about it yeah. and understand my show, it becomes a little bit more on the popular side. Like even on Twitter, it's like, you can see when a show jumps that phase where it's like, oh, it's all praise, like Venture Brothers in a way. It's a lot of praise. And then it gets to that place where it becomes a little more known and people are like, oh, I think there might be too many characters now. I'm like, there were too many characters <laughs> to begin with. And that's what makes it so great. It's just- it's but Like with our show, it starts off as like, you know, a bunch of kids in a dorm room on the interweb smoking pot and then eventually it's people who don't smoke pot are watching the show too and you're like oh my god really you have a I mean I see that family got this been fun fun time yeah absolutely but do you ever think about taking a South Park Live and kind of going them and poking fun of outside cartoons promoting like a mini cartoon or something a mini cartoon war I mean I think I think family guy just threw down the gauntlet with us if now no you know it's Again, it's, it's a weird situation. We, we're friends with everybody it's in a weird way. Everything we poke fun of is is really we're having fun with it because we love it. Um, 
And so I think that's really what makes us different than a lot of the other shows that are out there. And then those people who are making fun of come on our show to make fun of themselves, yeah. which is really <laughs> weird and awesome and all the credit to them for, for doing that. What uh, are some of the difficulties that you've had just trying to keep the show fresh? It's been on for so many seasons, you've ventured into Star Wars, RCDC. The 80s only lasted one decade, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, it starts with help. You're right. It's the writers. Um, yeah, I think I think the most important thing for us is uh, getting new voices. We we our our way of writing is we write in four week cycles. Uh, we have six writers in those four weeks. We have a, a steady four writers that are on and have been there pretty much since the get go. And then every four weeks we rotate in two new, two new writers. Um, to get some other perspectives on things, and we found really a lot of great people through that. Through that. And uh, you know, they then go off and do their own shows, and you know, we try to lure them back in any way we can, and beg for them too. Because also we do parody. I mean, there's always new shit to mock. You know, you know, just, uh, as the head of the adult school, when the show you guys off to make fun. Um, <laughs> you've actually put them in. Uh, you've actually Lazo? made one where they, yeah, they canceled you because you were making fun of them. Yeah, they didn't really cancel. Yeah. Of course they didn't really. We, yeah. we write that just just to be jerks. Um, <laughs> no, um, yeah, you know, with Lazo, I think he just got to the place where he just doesn't want to do his own voice because he heard Clark Duke, I don't know if you know him, uh, do mimic him. And he fell in love with the us mocking him voice better than he thinks he can perform himself. <laughs> So now he enjoys that version of himself more. So. Has, now, there, go sorry, go ahead. has there been a sketch that you guys just love, but the network was like, no, you, no, no. Can you tell us about that sketch? There was one. I think we <laughs> censored it more so than the, the, the baby joke. Do you remember that? It's like, it's this terrible thing where a woman gives birth and, you know, wow, like the baby is coming out and then the doctor looks at the baby and like realizes that the baby's not alive. And the, the, the <laughs> woman's like, oh my god, is it a boy or a girl? Is he okay? And like, you just see the doctor go, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we cut that because, I don't know, we well, just Well, because you just heard why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah, so that one got cut by there, us. There was, a skit, there was a sketch I wrote that I still want to turn into a kid's book. Uh, Called the, door, oh. the, called the doorway. I forgot about that. And this. it was a, it's my favorite standards and practice note we've ever received. It framed it, printed it out and framed it. Uh, but it's basically about a little kid who moves into a new house and there's a little door he finds in his bedroom. And at night, a little magical rabbit comes out of that door and does bad things to him while he's sleeping. <laughs> and he wakes up and the little kid nails up the door. And so the rabbit does other awful things to the kid's mouth while he's sleeping. And he explains that's what happens if you lock the door. <laughs> so it's a really it's a Sophie's choice of what you're gonna get with that rabbit. But we got the S and P note, and I we I mean like I wanted Malcolm McDowell to voice it. Like we had I mean I was I was so fucking excited about this skit, and then we got a note from S and P. Somehow I got them to vote on it, so we got to do it. And then the note from uh, Sandra Praxin came down, so we cannot we cannot you know we cannot. <clears throat> Okay, go forward with the sketch due to the fact that the rabbit fornicates with the boy while he's sleeping <laughs> and defecates in his mouth. <laughs> and I was like, they get it. I don't understand why they're not letting it go. <laughs> but, but I bet you, you if know. we made the boy 18, it might have been better. It, would, it wouldn't make sense then. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, the one, problem. One last question, guys. What about making the rabbit? What about making the boy like an animal? Last question. But the, once again, you're missing the point of what it, what it says about society. Right, one last question. Yeah, Reckon with your um, career also taking place, um, Franklin and Bash, uh, your yeah. film career, yeah. have with parody being at in work. mind. Yep, men at work. Um, yeah, with parody bad. being in mind, have you just gotten ready just to let the guys take everything like you and Mark Paul Goss here, or even you and Alicia Silverstone making fun right. of Clueless? Going sure. back and just making fun of yourselves? Oh, I, I mean, I, we've, I, I mean, honestly, I think it's fair game all around. I've never, I've never, I mean, as long as I get to voice myself, usually <laughs> that's my biggest complaint. If I don't get to do it, but uh, no, I'm happy anytime. I mean, that's the thing. Honestly, not even just me, but like Mark Paul. Like Mark Paul came on the show to make fun of himself. It's so much fun when you get to do that. Some of the early stuff, we'd get the guys who actually did the Smurfs voices. You got Brandy Smurf. And they get yeah. to make fun of their the thing they've been doing for 15 years. It's fun to take the piss out of yourself or have someone do it, you know. So that's why I like the show is no matter how much stuff you're busy doing, that's like 
place you can come home to and get mocked, you know. That's part Thank of you fun. guys. Thank, Thank you. you guys remember the BuzzFeed? We're taking like selfies of all the celebs. We're gonna do like a big group. Do okay. you guys want to take your pictures real quick for me? Okay. Just, like, oh, selfies. Yeah, selfies. Selfies? Yeah, so. No selfie I know, give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I did it. Is there anything we should be looking out for at the robot? <laughs> what you do? Yeah, I, I didn't do anything. Yes. I see. We're, uh, we're showing an animatic. Exactly. We just finished yeah. the animatic for the RCDC2, so we'll show a scene from. It's not animated yet, because we haven't animated it yet. But Thank you so much. Uh, we'll see a little bit yeah. <laughs> I like to play with toys.